Jesus. His name is a complete sentence. His name is an entire prayer. His name alone brings healing. His name guarantees salvation. His name quenches the thirsty soul and fills the soul's hunger. Jesus. His name is the perfect solution to every problem. His name can resolve conflict. He brings peace and calm into every situation. His name is protection. His name brings light when darkness is all around. Jesus. His name is music. It is the sweetest melody. His name is joy unspeakable. His name is perfect. His name is altogether lovely, magnificent, glorious. His name is Emmanuel. He is God with us. Amen. We're continuing on in Mark's Gospel from where we left off last week. And so we're reading Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue, who was possessed by an impure spirit, cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. You may know the famous story of the preacher who asked some children, What's furry, either red or grey in colour, and collects nuts. A little girl nervously answered, I know the answer should be Jesus, but it sounds like a squirrel to me. Well, unlike that occasion, the answer to the biblical story we've just read is Jesus. For Jesus and his authority are the focus of Mark's account here. And Jesus demonstrates his authority in two ways in this passage. The first is the authority of his teaching. It says in verse 22, the people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. What was the difference between Jesus and the teachers of the law? Well, the teachers of the law were learned men, but when they taught, all their exposition of the scriptures would be based on quoting previous authorities and commentators. To a large extent, the modern preacher does something very similar to that. Without you knowing it, I just quoted um, a New Testament scholar called Ian Paul. I could also look at my shelves of Bible commentaries and turning to Mark's Gospel, I could cite William Lane, Robert Gunich, Craig Evans or James Edwards. Whether I quote them or not, I will have engaged with some of their writing while working out what to preach. But Jesus doesn't need to do any of that. 
He has come from the Father. He is the Son of God. He doesn't need to derive anything. He speaks with personal divine authority. If he came to preach, he wouldn't need to say, Ian Paul thinks this. If he wrote an article, there would be no footnotes. You get a flavour of this in Matthew's Gospel where Jesus often says, You have heard it said, but I say to you. And I got that from Ian Paul as well. If you encounter the voice of God through a preacher today, it will be because the preacher has worked on faithfully and accurately relaying to you the teaching of Jesus and the Apostles. And that may have involved consulting learned sources. And there will also be the perhaps more obviously, explicitly um, spiritual dimension. Study is spiritual, but there's the more explicit stuff like prayer. Real preparation of the preacher will be soaked in prayer. The Holy Spirit will sovereignly choose to light up the words of the preacher in your hearts and minds such that you hear God rather than the preacher. Please pray for your preachers. We only have this secondary authority. Pray for our faithful study of the scriptures. Pray that we will be in tune with the Holy Spirit. And for all of us, preachers or otherwise, what we need is an authentic encounter with the voice and the teaching of Jesus through the work of the Holy Spirit. The scriptures have been preserved for us as the primary and supreme way to hear his authentic voice today. Therefore, it's not just a case of praying for Sunday's preacher. It's about exercising the privilege we all have to read the scriptures under the illumination of the Spirit and to encounter Jesus to whom they point. So there's the first way Jesus shows his unique authority in his teaching. The second way he shows it in our story today is in the authority of his power over evil. Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out with a shriek. This is a battle for power. The unclean spirit uses words that were commonly used as a rebuke in that culture. What do you want with us? The spirit also names Jesus as Jesus of Nazareth the Holy One of God. And that's a reflection of the ancient belief that knowing someone's name gave you power over them. So the evil spirit is going for a power play to try and neutralise Jesus here. But it doesn't work with Jesus. And how does he respond? Well, he doesn't use spells or incantations. He doesn't even need to pray. He acts on his own superior authority. This isn't a battle between two equal and opposite forces of good and evil. Jesus is superior. So he just says, be quiet, come out of him. And that's that. All done and dusted. Jesus doesn't just have words then. He has deeds. And those deeds validate the content of his teaching that we thought about last week, where he proclaims that the kingdom of God is near and it's time to repent. It's something that confronts us all. Very few people are demonised, but all of us 
face the conflict with evil and the temptation to go the wrong way. And so this combination of authoritative teaching and authoritative deeds face us with a choice. What will we do with Jesus? You know, at the end of the passage, we don't hear what choice the members of the synagogue make about Jesus. We only hear about their amazement and how news of Jesus spread throughout the region. Who of them will follow Jesus and who will oppose him? We know that very soon there will be a split. Teachers of the law, whose authority, as we have seen, is here displaced by Jesus, will mostly oppose him. Many ordinary people will follow him. But what about us? It's not enough just to admire his teaching and call him a good man or even a prophet. Choosing to do nothing about him, choosing just to say fine words, well, again, like the impure spirit, we're trying to neutralise him. That actually is to choose against him because we're saying that we don't want him to change us. You know, some people even try to neutralise the influence of Jesus by saying that they worship him on Sundays in church. But that same worship is really meant to convey the word and the works of God in Christ to us. It's meant to leave us with that choice. Perhaps... Some of us watching or listening today are also amazed by Jesus and his authority. But let's be more than amazed. Let's respond. Let's make the choice. Let's follow him.
You shall no longer be called despised or seen as forsaken, for the Lord delights in you. Those who are struggling to pay the mortgage, those who worry about the future, you shall no longer be called despised or seen as forsaken, for the Lord delights in you. Those who are not listed amongst the great and the good, those who will never make the celebrity A-list, you shall no longer be called despised or seen as forsaken, for the Lord delights in you. Those who feel shunned and ignored, those who struggle to get by each day, you shall no longer be called despised or seen as forsaken, for the Lord delights in you. Those whose hopes have been crushed, those whose dreams were dashed by life, you shall no longer be called despised or seen as forsaken, for the Lord delights in you. Amen.